Power Pack Pac-12 again in 2015. We're always in the conversation in terms of premier conferences. Wow, she's crushing it. Big time swing. Stanford, very experienced, very talented, and very motivated. If you've never seen Samantha Bricio, she is the best server in the country. The dogs are ready for a fight again. The deepest, most competitive conference they've ever had. The Pac-12 is College of Volleyball. It's Pac-12 Women's Volleyball presented by Tashi Kara. A cross-town rivalry to start things off tonight inside Pauley Pavilion. USC versus UCLA. Hi, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this Top 15 matchup. I'm Anne-Marie Anderson alongside Tammy Blackburn. And Tammy, let's get right into it. UCLA has a new face in Jordan Anderson who has been lights out. Well, she has been. What a great story. Jordan Anderson transferring from West Virginia. She has got an arm. And for UCLA, defenders in the back of her, they really get it going with great passes and then of course a great set by a freshman setter who's getting some great time. Jordan Anderson credits the defense as being the first line of defense, but let me tell you, she can bring it and she's going to have to deny it against a very good USC team. While she's new news, old news is good news for USC. Samantha Bricio, how about the career that she has had at USC, leading the Pac-12 in kills and aces, but now with the improvement of Bricio in the block, she can score three ways. Just how good is this matchup going to be? Well, how about this? UCLA on an eight-match win streak. USC, meanwhile, unbeaten in preseason. Stay with us. Lineups and first serve coming up right after the break. Every morning. This Pac-12 women's volleyball rivalry matchup is presented by Clean Crisp Coors Light and by Tashi Kara. We've got the ball, you bring the game. Start of conference play for these two teams inside Poly Pavilion, UCLA and USC in a top 15 matchup. Let's take a look at the lineups. USC Trojans first, Tammy. Who else is special on this team? Well, number 15, Bailey Johnson. She doubles in that setter position along with the opposite. Mick Haley has so much confidence in her, and she's been remarkable for being just a freshman. When we take a look at UCLA's lineup, you told us about Jordan Anderson, but she's only one of several weapons they well, have. Number three, you're absolutely right. Riley Bouchler has done such an amazing job. She's an asset from the service line as well. Leads this UCLA team at 10 service aces. Michael Seeley is the head coach of UCLA in his sixth year in that position. Of course, he won a national championship with the team in his first season. How's that for a good start? Set this team to a national champion as well, that national championship. Meanwhile, Mick Haley, well, he has done incredible things at USC and all over the country. One of the legends in coaching of this game, and he is having fun this year, Tammy. Made some changes back in January. Those changes have been well documented. If you've been following us in the non-conference women's volleyball for USC, an up-tempo offense. Victoria Garrick is going to start things off. She is serving. She plays back court for Elise Ford. She's a freshman. Munoz goes to the middle. Doug. Bricio. And the middle works as Ruddens puts it away. Now this is a USC team that we have seen time and time again set the middle right out of the gates to get Ruddens absolutely involved to try to set and provide balance across the net. Taking a look at the series history, the Bruins lead the series. Last season, UCLA won both matches. USC had a bit of a down year. You talked about some changes and they have been working. Whittingham again with the dig. Bailey Johnson, yeah, she's going to set, but right now she's going to crush. With the pizza segola on the floor and setting, she is an option on that opposite side. She's got a great swing. We just mentioned that McKaylee has a lot of confidence in her. The more swings that she gets, takes a little bit of pressure off Fabricio, and she can terminate. Yeah, McKaylee also says he feels like Johnson relaxes when she hits. How about that crush from Lawless relaxed? The redshirt junior, Haley Lawless. 
Played in 20 matches last year, 60 sets comes into this year as a veteran player. Yeah, after having right shoulder surgery, knee surgery last year, shoulder surgery as a freshman. Serve from Frager. Sends the Trojans running. Free ball. Munoz goes outside. Bushler announces herself. Michael Seeley standing up already knowing how important it is to get every single opportunity. USC gives UCLA a free ball on a tough serve reception by Whittingham. And here's what happens when Riley Bushler terminates. Jenny Frager continues to serve. That one wide. Elise Reddens comes back to serve as Jenny Frager goes out. And Alicia Ogums comes up front for USC. Munoz, little touch. Bushler has to chase it. Goes long. Well, you're seeing a freshman setter for UCLA. Michael Seeley said she's been a great spark for us. And that Rainbow Wahini Classic just a few weeks ago gave her certainly some great minutes, and he liked what he saw. Outside. Bricio. No mystery who's getting the ball in that broken play. Doesn't matter. She's usually very strong. Pizza Sigola. Diggs. Bushler. I'm sorry, excuse me. Johnson with the right touch. Little bump set there, but the USC is able to make something of it. I suspect that we're going to see some pretty good rallies throughout this match. You've got two top 15 teams, UCLA number 13, USC sits at number three, basically almost two top 10 teams, Anne-Marie. Yeah, really, and USC on that service ace, USC's only dropped two sets all season long. No matches, but only two sets. At least Ruddens gets a service ace and is back for another. Best shape of her life, according to McHaley. And that's right, Nuno reaching over the net, backcourt attack, trying to save the ball. Good serve by Ruttons all the way to that end line. As you take a look at this great angle from our net cam, look at Nuno go up and over, and there's the violation. The USC Ruttons back again. And a great job by Ogum showing, I'm protecting that. She's touching me. Through the scene. Pizza to goal to Bricio. Munoz, a little bit of a... Missed conversation there, but what a deliberate Ogums. Well, how about the quick? And this is the up-tempo that USC kind of put in place that Mick Haley says it's about fitness. The team is buying into it. And Ogum said early on, I love it. I can't wait to run it. She's enjoying it. A six-point lead, USC on a roll. In the f and the USC Trojans. You're watching Pac-12 Los Angeles. Top 25 teams in the conference. Tammy, we're loaded with them. Well, Pac-12, you come to expect that with Pac-12 women's volleyball. You talk about the representation around the nation, the best women's volleyball conference. How about with the Arizona State Sun Devils? They're another undefeated team. We're seeing one here at USC. And then there's another one, the Washington Huskies under first-year head coach Keegan Cook. These USC Trojans really on a nice roll. But representation, Anne-Marie, from top to bottom, sure to be in our leading night here tonight, Wednesday night match of the week. Very fun season. Yeah, it should be great. Mick Haley in our conversation with me yesterday said, I'm looking forward to Arizona, Arizona State, which is tomorrow night on Pac-12 Networks because of all the great conference talent. We talked so much about the players in this conference. McHaley reminded us yesterday the coaching and the strategies to beat each other. He's absolutely right. Great coaches in this conference as well. Meanwhile, USC continues to roll. Tammy, what's going wrong for UCLA? Yeah, passing is really suspect for UCLA. They've got to be able to iron out those details. For both of these teams, key here today will be passing. I know it sounds cliche, but so important because they have such great hitters. Bruins get a break with a service error from Elise Ruddens. That'll stop that run. But now we'll see what the Bruins are able to do with it. And here comes the Smalls for UCLA in the back, right? We talk about all the big players all the time. It's no offense given to the Smalls. They like being called it because Inoy and other players are so effective here. You're killing me, Smalls. That's right. <laughs> Bricio challenging. 
almost instant outfits, right? She is stronger in 2015. If you didn't think that she could get stronger, she trained hard in the offseason. You can see what she can do. I mentioned in the open, she can score three ways. An asset from the service line, a great attacker, and also improved block. Much improved blocking, lots of fun. Meanwhile, the passing still a bit of a struggle, but Ogums leaves the door open. The slide play for UCLA, certainly Michael Seeley, such a great coach, wanting to try to mix it up, understands that USC is a little different. He complimented McHaley on enjoying so many years of being the high ball coach. Now things changing up. Bracio, you bet. Single block, not going to do it. And the reality of being in this conference is that you have to be good in the block one versus one. But when you're going up against a player as experienced as Samantha Bricio, instant offense. And credit, of course, USC's passing gives all those options open. Up front is number one, Elise Ford has come in for USC. And Bricio from the service line. Bricio dug by Formico. That's right. UCLA point gets Bricio off the back line. And great passing. You see how good UCLA can be. They have dynamic hitters. We've talked about Anderson. We've talked about Bushler. When their passing works, look at that dig by Formico. And then it sets this play up. They can actually attack out of the back. Huge play for Bushler. Anytime you get Bricio off of the service line, it's big. Free ball to UCLA. Do they convert? Uh-oh. Ogham's stumbled. Whittingham. Perfect. On the money. And then Ford, the freshman, uses hands. Well, Whittingham really gave Ford a great opportunity. And it was all because of this approach. It starts in the back, and then Bailey Johnson again, that freshman setter who doubles as setter and opposite, gave Ford a nice set to terminate. Enoy, great pass. Laid out. Oh, my. Bailey Johnson apologizing, apologizing. Sam didn't mean to get in your way. As she smiles as she knows that they got away with it. Look at this dig here. Johnson going up. And then at the end of that, look at Samantha make something of nothing. And say, freshman, I hit all of those all the time. Big block, but it's long. Great use by UCLA. Nice power of Jordan Anderson. Anne Marie, you were talking to me about that very thing right before this match. You said you really enjoy watching her power, but she's not a player that's going to muscle through all the time. She's going to mix her shots up. Yeah, that has been the big difference for her, hasn't it, this season? Coming from West Virginia, learning to mix it up. Meanwhile, a missed connection, and now UCLA putting two points back to back. So as. Abercrombie comes out, in comes Pizza Segola to set from the backcourt. Rodden's Ford and Johnson up front. They go at Anderson and end up going wide. Carly Jolson comes back in for UCLA. Jolson has been fantastic. She was the libero in 2013, took a lesser role, if you will, last year as a defensive specialist, and again this season. But it's really only in name only. She's a huge leader back there. Ford. Nice job using the block again. When you see the coverage just wasn't there. It wasn't without great hustle by UCLA, but those two blockers got their hands on it. But that ball fell right behind him. Very difficult to get. I like the defensive perimeter shape that UCLA took, but just a power hit by USC. Garrick back to serve. Munoz, wondering who's going to be her hot hitter. The blocking looking strong. Communication not looking great for UCLA as two players play that. Bricio, bail us out. And she does. 
I think you're seeing that UCLA, when they are in system, they can be very good when they've got their option. They just haven't been in system. That's something that UCLA will have to adjust and try to settle into this match. Meanwhile, USC really running with it. Samantha Bricio, four kills already. No errors. She is hot. In the West. Samantha Bricio, toughest server in the nation. It sounds different. There's just something about the way that she contacts the ball. Led the NCAA in aces as a sophomore. She's stronger than ever. Bricio cracks it inside. That's a special kind of swing. She's just getting warmed up. Well, the senior Samantha Bricio for USC just enjoys being a great asset from the service line. And she talks to, to us a little bit about, you know, her approach in her service as well. She's been a ton of fun just going at it, looking for the ace wherever she can. Piece of Segola to Bricio. Back in her face. That's a huge moment for Lawless. And Frager, but I think they just poked the tiger tammy. <laughs> a beautiful, nice job of Lawless to set this block as she gets there. And Samantha Bricio, look at the approach that she takes, a big arm swing. But Lawless, very textbook blocking skills. Here's my advice for UCLA. The ball's going to go to Bricio. Look out. When she gets Great a good coverage. ball, she's going at him. Second time now that UCLA's middles have brought the ball down with them. Tip of the cap USA's there. Middles. Yeah, two, tip of the cap there from Yuno, who really hustled. And, you know, this is what a UCLA team that talks about the backs being the first line of defense. And these players uh, always know that the defense is back there. That play started with Muno and great effort. Yeah, and also the change in blocking for USC, the swing blocking, Tammy. There you can really see it's not quite polished yet. Service uh, hitting error for Bricio, her first of the match. Three unanswered points by UCLA. Nice pass. And the middle connection so strong. Ruddens is fit. We've talked about it a lot in the non-conference. She got herself in shape. This is a Mick Haley team that wanted to establish the middle. They had some injuries throughout their middles. We know that Ogums is not 100% healthy, but it's nice to have a player in Ruddens who is. Ruddens sends that ball long. And so as she steps out right now, Inoue comes in. Three service errors for USC. Inoue, a senior out of Hawaii, paired up with Drolson on the sand last outdoor season. What a perfect placement from the middle. Just a great read, too, by Ogums. You know, just moments ago, she fell, and she was gingerly getting up, and she had a hard time. She's never going to be 100%. They protect her in practice. She does not go 100% of the time. It's a very good move by McHaley. Yeah, even in many weeks, as little as 20 minutes, which is amazing. Of course, there's a lot of mental work as well that happens, but she's had foot problems coming into this season. Second consecutive service error out of USC. Four service errors for USC, UCLA only one, but UCLA needing to make sure defensively that they iron out things and in terms of their passing. Bushler. Out of system, Abercrombie, a lefter, lefty on the left side there, gets the kill. A tough hit. That ball has to come all the way over to that left shoulder with Abercrombie being a left. She's able to use that block. Such a nice asset on the opposite side for USC. Cue the music. Samantha Bricio back to serve. And a football called on Bricio. She's aggressive. She attacks her serve. And you can see the foot on the line. That's a great call, a great get. Abercrombie. And then outside, Anderson, been quiet, gets 
your first kill today. In that back there, Whittingham sitting to the left of Samantha Bricio. Bricio looked a bit hesitant, a ball that she thought that Whittingham was going to go after, and you see it splits that defense in the back. So interesting, we never see Bricio hesitant, but now she's had Johnson come at her. She's been a little unsure with Whittingham. You never know, is she rattled? Abercrombie sends it long, and what was a quick start for USC is dissipating. You know, and it's important for UCLA. What they're doing is they're hanging around. They're not yet letting USC pull away too far. This is a sign of a team that can kind of settle in and have a chance to talk to Michael Seeley in this huddle. I remember that first timeout came at the courtesy of Michael Seeley, 8-2. It looked like a fast kind of running match, and then things have come apart a little bit. And USC, meanwhile, we take a look at their resume as a program. Last year, we mentioned, was a down year, but overall, six national championships, seven conference championships. They have been an incredible program. You know, and, and we talk so much about USC really having a difficult year. They, they actually still went to the NCAA tournament. They won Coastal Carolina, lost to UNC in that second round. But look at the resume here of them, 32 NCAA tournament appearances. And Rhea, it, it's hard not to mention that in Mick Haley's career, he's such a high ball guy. He changes it up, and so many of these seniors have played in that high ball system, right? How do you think that they adapt and really kind of embrace the changes that was made? And I think they've obviously done a very good job of embracing it. Right, especially for people like Bricio, as you say, and, and the other players have been there this entire time. Mick Haley said, look, it wasn't working. I had to change. Taking a look at USC as a program, they have been highly successful as well. We mentioned their national championship in 2011. Not shabby here either. Well, and, and for UCLA, the, the story that I love is when you read through these student athletes and their bios, so many of these players on the team who were juniors and seniors, they fell in love with UCLA when they won a national championship. And it became the dream school for so many of these players, and that's why they're here today. I love the fact that they could dream big and actually get to their goal, which is playing for UCLA. UCLA right now playing very well. Taylor Formico. In the back serving, this libero is vocal, will come all the way up to the net and tell people where to be. Whittingham's pass is tight, and the block is huge from Frager. Just a remarkable read by Jenny Frager. First of all, Bailey Johnson with the one-handed set. Reminded me of Maddie Bug at Stanford with that athletic ability. Whittingham's pass is off, and Frager comes back again anyway, along with you know. Ruth Block and the Bruins are within two. Frager, who played only six matches in 2013, two years ago, started nine of 15 last year, picking up where she left off. Great at the net. Whittingham, three consecutive times they serve to her. Back to the middle and a point for SC. They're getting blocked on the outside. Ogums is there. You get a good pass. Go down the middle. Ruddens is back in now in the middle. Forward outside, Bricio always a weapon in the back. Muno delivers outside. Anderson still trying to find a hole. Hard and harder will get you in trouble if you're playing USC. You gotta mix it up some. Back court. Outside. Great use of the block from Anderson. Well, I like how Buchler did not send over an easy free ball for USC. She attacked it, but then USC comes right back after this great set, a big block. Shoulder to shoulder, closes it out. Nice turn by Fregel, who's been a big difference in these last five points. She has played in all but one set to date. She leads this team in blocks per set. We saw a few moments ago, but now she's getting involved in the offense, and that's key for UCLA. It's a nice rotation for UCLA to be in right now with Yuno serving. Big guns up front. That ball hit off the antenna by Abercrombie. Bricio keeps it in play. Formico, great hands. High. Bricio's back there. Now Ford, tough angle. Makes it work. First of all, Bricio goes back beyond the end 
one line and grabs that one, gets it over to Whittingham, who puts it high for Ford, well off the net. So really no angle ability for Ford there, but finds a spot there, puts it. Pizza Segola back to serve. Nice pop-up by Ruddens. How about Ford? That set is so low, she's so quick. Watch this set, how it sails right over the head of Ford, and she just torques her body to go back and get that nice cut, good angle. Rips that sucker right out of the air. Pizza Segola serving. Goes at Formico, who delivers perfectly. Tight ball. It's up. Boy, Bruins. We see Jordan Anderson doing a nice job on that opposite side. As she goes through this rotation, she receives that back set now in the rotation. She's going to sit out. She's chatting with the assistant coach, Caitlin Nielsen. Yeah, and Anderson, usually a big kill leader for this team, has struggled so far in this match. And we've said hitting hard and harder is not going to work against a team like USC. Serving like that is. Well, UCLA, again, I mentioned this earlier, hanging around, staying within close range to USC. Picks that one up on a service ace. McHaley going to call timeout, talk about things. Yeah, McHaley perhaps wanting to stop the momentum. Usually the two people who are perfect for him are Whittingham and Bricio. Both of them and some uncharacteristic errors. And tonight, Pac-12 Networks is proud to present the return of The Drive. Our third season, our crew is set to take you inside the huddle of Oregon State and Utah football. Season premiere of The Drive tonight at 9.30 on Pac-12 Network. One of my favorite shows on the Pac-12 Network gives you the inside goods on all the teams. Great football season so far for Pac-12. Been some exciting matches. Saturday college football lineup. And after this broadcast, most of you will see the drive up next. Those of you watching Pac-12 Network will see an encore presentation of the drive at 10 p.m. Now USC's hitting percentage has continued to decrease at each and every stat sheet that has been handed to me nearly perfect before the first time out. And now they've got seven hitting errors, 16 kills on seven errors, 34 attempts. USC hitting 265. Meanwhile, UCLA, because of that passing, hasn't really been able to see much of anything, only hitting 100 right now. Yeah, Tam, it's a great point. Uh, six of those USC attack errors have been in the last eight points. That really says everything. They're doing a lot of this to themselves as well. UCLA is playing great and making the most of it. The confidence level for UCLA has definitely ratcheted up a couple notches. Drolson back to serve. Again, the pass is a challenge. You know. Nice set by Whittingham, and again, Ford bounces it off the head. Oh, Bushler with a foot. Doesn't go over, but she gets style points. What a great pursuit. Watch this ball go right off the hands of the block. And then that's Muno who goes down to get it. Formico tries to keep it alive by kicking it back into play over the nets in between the antennas. Doesn't count. Yeah, but it would be legal. It was a nice it would clean be. kick. Great use of the block by Bushler. Rudd's hands over the net as Nikki Haley was telling us about Timmy, but turned the wrong way. Riley Bushler, your 2014 All Pac-12 honorable mention. Also made the Pac-12 All Freshman team. Still set point for USC. But another error, and UCLA pushing it. 24, 23. Are they going to call a touch? The lead official Kevin Cole is doing that. The crowd here not happy. Says it was a touch, and that is going to end the set. The air has been sucked out of Pauly Pavilion with that one. A touch called on that last ball. 
and that will make it 25 at 23. And so UCLA dejected. Ends a set on a ref's call. Set two coming up next. The work as hard as I do. Welcome back to this top 15 matchup on Pac-12 Network presented by Tashi Kara. Set number one ended Tammy on a controversial call. Well, Rudd is just going to go up for a middle set here. and This was called a tip. It's very difficult to see on that. Did it touch or not? So difficult, so close. But watch Ruddens go up. And the block for UCLA. Certainly, certainly no net violation there. Very textbook blocking. Too close to call. Yeah, certainly a very tough call. And for UCLA, who would come charging back, Tammy, you made the point that with each and every point they got stronger, a heartbreaker. They're taking a look at the kills. Those numbers don't entirely tell the story, Tammy, because as you said, the second half of that set was really all UCLA. Yeah, UCLA getting better as that set went on. And Michael Seeley certainly going to hope that they can play. And, you know, iron out some of the details. First of all, it has to be about passing. We've already established that, you know, right off, right off the front of this match. Some of the other things, too, is... You know, making sure that you want to get Frager. I mean, she was so good at the net in terms of those blocks. Try to get her a couple more blocks on the stat sheet for Frager. Of course, you'd like to see Jordan Anderson go off at some point in time. For sure. I'm sure the crowd here would like to see Jordan Anderson go off as well. She has the ability. There's another good tip by Frager right in the middle there. Anderson, high off hands. Roof block, Abercrombie and Ogums. So this is just an, another very good read by USC's blockers. Abercrombie on the outside. Ogums comes over as your middle blocker. Close it out. Nicely done. Samantha Bricio back to serve for USC. She didn't get on a real roll. Two errors and four. Two errors in the first set. Hitting errors. And that served long. So now it's two service errors as well. So UCLA gets USC to make an error in their service and an opportunity for UCLA to take momentum right now away from a USC team that finished out set number one. But UCLA, good energy. It's all about the momentum shift. Drolson serving. No net call there, but instead a kill. Just a beautiful pass out of the back to allow that back set to happen. Watch Bailey Johnson go back. Whittingham serve goes at Drolson. Bushler, no touch. And the, the energy just kind of evaporated from Pauly with the end of that last set. It's a little bit up for grabs at this point. Whittingham goes again at Drolson. Boy, Ford is getting some crazy angles because the set is not exactly where they want it. And again, the middle doesn't close. You know, I like that. Muno went to Lawless twice on the opposite side, and I like this because I thought Lawless did a nice job of attacking the first time. No termination there. But the second time, Muno had Lawless's name again. It is incumbent upon a setter to hit the hot hitter, and I thought that was a great read by Muno. Outside. Ford. Looking so good, the freshman, Elise Ford, out of Laguna Beach, starting to get really comfortable. Blue Johnson has to set that ball, come back right about the three-meter line. Ford, five kills on six swings, hitting 667. Did I mention she's a freshman? Because I think I did. Lawless, tips, back to Ford. It's working. Roof block again, and it's the other freshman from USC, Johnson. For UCLA, unfortunately, it started with tough service reception by Bouchler. I wasn't sure if it was her platform that wasn't totally formed or just a, a bad read there on that service reception by Bouchler. But then you, UCLA rallied a bit. USC comes back and closes it out. 
Muno makes a nice set to the middle. People in the way of USC setters. Backcourt. Here's Bushler again. The setting of both teams really drifting a bit. Ford having a day. You know, we've seen Ford do this a couple of times. It feels to me like after the non-conference, she's making reads. She's finding the holes. Watch her find this hole right here and go around the block instead of try to drive that ball and muscle it through. Her first career match at Pauley Pavilion said, hey, I hear this is a big rivalry. <laughs> Let me make sure. Great cut the other way. All right, now I'm going to give props to Bushler because a few plays ago I said that her platform didn't quite form the right way and she had a tough service reception. That time it was nice, and then as a result, look what happens. They get the nice execution there, termination for UCLA. Bushler up front. Middle, seamless to Ruddens. And again, just delivered too far outside. Hard to retrieve. Unfortunately for Buescher, she just didn't have much to work with on that set there from Muno. Garrick serve to Enoy. Again. School is closed. UCLA shutting them down. I'm sorry, USC shutting them down the block. You know, watch this slide play here, trying to be executed. It was nicely run, and certainly Felix looks great off of that one foot. But what a block by Samantha Bricio. Something she has improved, and that's where she can score three different ways. I bet she's getting a lot of satisfaction out of that improvement. There was a little bit of a hole. Bushler saw it and drove right through it. You know, last year, Bushler did such a nice job of attacking and challenging the block. She really didn't back down at all. In fact, I watched the rematch from last year with Bushler going against Washington State in Pullman. I thought she did a very good job. That play was reminiscent of a type of Bushler play last year. Nice dig. Anderson way off. Keeps it in place. Smart play by Jordan Anderson. She leads this Bruin team in kills. She had a season-best 20 kills against the 18th-ranked USD Toreros. And you see a little bit more of it. Yeah, and really key for her that she'll be in charge. Meanwhile, great work by Felix in the middle. And Felix may not take as many attempts, but she is great at the net. She is leading this team in 401 hitting percentage, by the way. Not nearly the number of attempts, but still a great middle blocking threat. A little help from the equipment as Johnson smacks it over the tape. Yeah, Tammy, you mentioned Anderson just one kill in this set. Bushler just one kill in this set. That's what UCLA needs. Those are their two big guns. And they're still within three. Great Muno. service reception there by Bushler, you see? And, and a little fist pump. And this is this is a Bushler now who's getting more settled, I think, in the back. A couple of very good service receptions to allow the termination at the net to happen. Formico back to serve. Nice serve. Communication from UCLA. Formico's like, hey, I pass when the setter digs. I set when the setter digs. Is there a touch? No, ma'am. Trojan's point. Did you just call me ma'am? No, I was okay. saying. Okay. I feel like I'm getting old if you call me ma'am. No, no. When those players are asking for it, it's kind of the standard volleyball talk. I'm no, just having some fun with you. You're not going to get a touch off of that one, no matter how much you got. Do you look? But I can call you ma'am if you insist. Outside. Oh, Tammy, the connection, the connection. And it was such a good pass. Service reception was absolutely excellent in the back from Enoy. Here's where you want an NCAA championship setter coaching you, and they have it in Michael Seeley. Unfortunately, they don't have a whole lot of time when they come in for player development. Anderson, who's a sneak peek at some of the angles. She can hit that one wide. 
Anderson, a reminder, she transferred from West Virginia University, led the Big 12 Conference in kills. She wanted to transfer to TCU to follow the coach with Jill Kramer. We'll finish up the story when we come back. Meanwhile, USC continuing to feel good. A five-point lead but over UCLA in set number two. Steve Sarkeesian, head football coach at the University of Oceans. You're watching Pac-12 Los Angeles. Welcome back to Los Angeles. Pac-12 Volleyball and Pac-12 Network presented by Tashi Kara. Set number two, Jordan Anderson. Tammy, you were telling us. But she wanted to follow her, her coach at West Virginia University, Jill Kramer, to TCU. But then when she realized because it was the same conference that she'd have to sit out for a year, she's such a competitor, she said, well, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so she actually talked and sat down with her club coach and said, hey, my two dream schools would be North Carolina and UCLA. And here she is wearing a Bruins jersey. jersey. Great story. You know, to the middle. Solo block, and I'm going to do it. Abercrombie, so effective from the right. Such a great asset on that opposite side, especially with the left-hander. We're so used to seeing in years past the left-hander wear a UCLA Bruins jersey who graduated Karstalo. Outside to Anderson, again, tips the ball. Bricio goes long. Wants that one back, too. She just has a grimace on her face, and she knows that one got away from her. You know, Tabby, you mentioned Karsta Lowe. We were talking about Anderson. Here's how much West Virginia relied upon Anderson. She had 100 more swings last year than Karsta Lowe did. She's had 1,000 swings two years in a row. It's a lot of swings. It's but she's her shoulder's still attached. To her <laughs> she's making an immediate impact here for UCLA and the graduation of Carstolo. Back set to Bricio. Lawless tries to tip it along. Wow. <laughs> no gums. First one was a short triple all across the net. Second one, straight down. Well, again, Muno, who's now twice gone consecutive to Lawless on that back set. And with that, Muno goes out. Ryan Chandler comes in to set for the Bruins. Number 24, she's a redshirt sophomore, out of Pepperdine, sat out last year, and trained in the spring with this team. Changing in the middle of a set. Crush, that's Samantha Bricio. And there's a good look at Ryan Chandler. How tough is that to come in in the middle of the set? It's uh, difficult, but she's got plenty of experience, a bit more experience than Muno. Yeah, was a defensive specialist at Pepperdine. As Bricio has a service error. Chandler took that year off from college volleyball, but still trained. She played with Wave, a club here well known, and trained a lot with Jed Bushler, Riley Bushler's dad. Not a bad trainer. Now still had plenty of touches <laughs> on the ball. 12-year NBA career for Riley Bushler's father, Jed Bushler. Over. Ogums reads quickly the overpass. She is there to immediately put the ball back down. A smile and look at USC. Boy, do they look like a confident bunch. They do. Hopefully their memory's long enough to remember set number one when UCLA stepped on the gas right at this point in the set and nearly took the set from them. Don't count the Bruins out because of that. It's wide. And the Trojans continue to roll. So it's a Drolson, Drolson, Bushler, and Formico in the backcourt for the Bruins. Solid passing court. The pass goes awry. Outside to Ford, who is just having a wrecking stay. Eight kills for her hitting 600. 
She's a local product here from the Laguna Beach area. Played her high school ball at modern day. Has high vertical jump. She's got a lot of power, too. A lot of fun to watch. USC hitting 281 in this and controlling this set. In the West, we do things a little differently. Play. Offensive player of the week for the Pac-12 Conference for the first time this season. It is not Samantha Bricio. <laughs> and Gabby Simpson set her at opposite out of Colorado. That, that's right. Great contributions that the sophomore Gabby Simpson is making. Now, she played quite a bit as a freshman last year. And, of course, we know that her two sisters, Taylor and Sierra, as well. Now, Taylor Simpson has since graduated, but Gabby Simpson really stepping up. However, Colorado goes on the road tonight. They played right before us on the road at Utah, and Beth Lanier's squad managed to eat that one out three to one and Colorado came out down two sets and they beat that one in the third one but battled back in the fourth all Utah yeah and stay with us at the Pac-12 volleyball intermission report with Kate Rooney in the studio she's going to take you through that match a little bit and also talk about the big loss for UCLA football torn meniscus already has had surgery a guy that doubles as a defensive lineman and a running back a physical running back who can run the ball in what an absolute tough loss for ucla yeah of course we're talking about miles jack meanwhile a 10 point lead for the trojans winningham back to serve Tammy, what's gone wrong for the bruins in this set I think I think their passing is actually getting better, but how about crediting USC with some great blocking? Wow, what another save by Ford. It's up. Abercrombie got that up. Great pass. One blocker. You better believe Bush is going to put that away. And a nice job by Ryan Chandler, who checks in as the setter, as they're going to call that ball out. Out. No touch. Oh, tough break for UCLA. McHaley likes it, of course, but a tough break. Well, and certainly McHaley going to keep his team focused and try to ride the wave. If UCLA lets him think about it. Lawless keeps hammering away, though. He's Bruins tough. Whew. Ford delivered that with some hands. Outside, quick ball to Ford. Lawless, trying again. Longest rally we've seen so far. Ford, tough location. Oh, Bricio, just put it away. Great rally. Couple of sets off the net for UCLA. Bailey Johnson mixing it up on the other side, setting for USC. Shooting that ball out to the pin on the left-hand side, but also using the opposite at times. Another setting change for UCLA as Muno comes back in. Clearly UCLA going to use all their length up front. Go with the backcourt setter for right now. And Muno tries to take control, but USC picks it up. Bruins use the block. Solid pass. Ball is set low. And again, Lawless really the outlet for the Bruins. Nice kill. Start to get a feel that good communication, good timing, good rhythm. Haley Lawless really working hard on that opposite side for UCLA to try to keep them in it. Service error is ball is set long. After this broadcast, most of you will see the drive up next. And while those of you watching Pac-12 Network will see an encore presentation of the drive at 10 p.m. Great pass. Wow. Middle. That's it. Great connection, good timing. Great pass. Allows you to have some options. And that's a great option, Claire Felix. It was big and quick. Coming in as Enoy comes in, so does Jessica Namo. 
out of Australia. She's in the back. Five foot eleven. And you know, has remained up front. Five foot ten, at least according to the chart. She is, so that's going to be interesting to see if USC sets outside treading over Muno. Garrick serving. Perfect pass for Minoy. Claire Felix looking very strong. Mauricio touched by Namo. Oh, you're right. I like the look to go to Felix and on that slide off a of one, but then USC comes back and look at them in transition and how quick they are. Set point, women of Troy. Another on money pass. It's passed by Namo. But that's going to do it. Women of Troy win the second set decisively. Well, clearly USC playing nice, clean volleyball, good passing. They're going to their superstar, Samantha Bricio, but so many other players for USC. Things clicking on all cylinders. Certainly is for USC, and Elise Ford has been lights out. Mick Haley joining us now. Coach, Elise Ford, just a freshman, her first match at her rival in Poly Pavilion. What do you think of her performance so far? Oh, this is what happens to freshmen when they get in this match. Uh, Bushler did this to us last year, and she was a freshman for UCLA. So it, it's a lot of fun. This is a great match. Ford's playing great. Well, Mick, certainly you have to be happy with the blocking. The blocking's done a spectacular job. The first line of defense is great. It allows things to get started for you and transition into offense. No question about that. I, I also think our, our back row now is starting to come along with that because the block's been so good at taking out areas that we now can get in the angles quicker. So, yeah, all of it's starting to come together. But we'll come and go a little bit with this system until we really play it enough that uh, we get comfortable with it. Thanks so much, Coach, for joining us. Coach McKinley Clark talking you. about the quicker system coming right up after these messages. We're going to take you to our Pac-12 and Network Studio for the Pac-12 Intermission Report with Katie Rooney. Women of Troy up two sets to none at the break. This Pac-12 volleyball production is brought to you in high definition. Welcome back to the campus of UCLA Pac-12 Volleyball presented by Tashi Kara. Women of Troy not being very good guests. They're up two to none in this conference opener for these two teams. Tammy Samantha Bricio, as usual, very effective. Well, it's another highlight reel for her. You know, we've talked so much about her versatility in terms of the power. Look at the height she gets and the arm swing that she brings and the power. We talked about her being versatile out of the back as well. They continue to use her again. More power here. And then a bit of finesse as she switches things up just kind of tips it over finds the space oh great read by the senior yeah she's just unstoppable and when you take a look at the numbers really the hitting percentage painful that is a cumulative hitting percentage for UCLA they hit negative numbers in the first in the second set a 299 and we asked Mick before we went into intermission about those six blocks and talked about what that's doing for his team starts at the net with that defense great blocks I love the numbers and certainly I think Ogums and several others doing a very good job efforting at the net this is the conference opener for these two teams Sunday. Another exciting women's volleyball match. Junior phenom Jordan Anderson, we've been watching today, and the Bruins travel to Berkeley to face the Bears. Cal Bears coverage begins Sunday at noon on Pac-12 Bay Area and Pac-12 Los Angeles, or watch on Pac-12.now and Pac-12.com. Taking a look at the ABCA top 10, UCLA, we mentioned undefeated and things looking pretty good for them so far and Penn in this State match. Sits the top once again, continuing to do it. And Texas right there behind them. Nebraska chipping in at number four. Florida at eight and one. Washington, Arizona State, those other two undefeated teams as you just mentioned. Stanford who played Cal on Cal's home floor last night. Cal played some great volleyball. Stanford starting to put the pieces together having lost Inky Ajanaku to that knee injury. 
and John Dunning, the head coach there, saying, you know, based on what happened to us early on, things are starting to come together. We're piecing it one piece at a time, and they look pretty darn good against Cal as they walked away with the win. Yeah, and you talked about Arizona State ranked seven undefeated. They've got a couple of new names in Pickrell. Kylie Pickrell, a freshman at setter, and her sister Cassidy on the outside. They'll be playing on Pac-12 Networks tomorrow night versus Arizona. Bricio, little tip. You know, starting again for the Bruins in the setting position. Nice pop up on you know. Whittingham, that's what she does. And it converts. Great chase by the Bruins. It's back in play, and Pauly Pavilion cheering them on. What a pursuit there in the back for UCLA to keep that ball alive. Watch this save. Carly Drolson chases it down, and then as a result, the end of the play, the lefty on the opposite side there, Abercrombie, puts it away. Love that about Carly Drolson. She is never going to give up on that ball. Bricio doesn't like the timing, so she stutters. And again, Drolson chases it all the way to the stands. I think you have to remember what Drolson did last year. 2014 in the regional semifinals, 10 digs against Penn State. That team that we just saw that sits atop in the top 25 of the ABCA poll. I love it. And, it, and the name Smalls comes from them. They call themselves that, Drolson and Enoy. Outside, Bushler. Changes her pace. Back court. Garrick says, okay, I don't usually get this opportunity. Great angle. That's Claire Felix again. Looks strong. You know to Felix. And we've seen Felix step up, especially in set number two. She was good in the middle blocking position. She was great on the slide. I think she looked pretty good off of that one foot. We'll see how UCLA responds after that second set. Certainly a lot of things went wrong all at once for them. Ovens, left hand. Formico had to take that second ball and bump that over for an outside attack, which gives USC time to make that read on that block. And here is the block right there as they finish it. Good penetration over the net by Ogums. Ogum's up front is going to be joined by Elise Ford, as well as Abercrombie. Ford hitting an incredible 500 in her first career match against UCLA. Great solid blocking in defense. And there's Elise Ford coming back in to do damage. Tammy, what have you thought of her play so far? Well, freshman? I, I think she doesn't have a ceiling, and Mick Haley doesn't know what her ceiling is. Of course, we asked him about that. He just says, I don't know. I think our opponents better watch out, her vertical ability. But you're seeing a lot of power tonight. I think you're seeing her make some very good shots and make some reads here. And how about Bricia with her first service ace of the match? Scratching the itch. so fun to watch. Last year we brought you the speed of that 48, 49, 50 miles an hour that that's coming at you. Not to mention the curve, the bend it has in it. Yeah, the bend. And again, another great one. That one kicking UCLA out of system. But set deep. And Grease will be off the service line. Point Bruins. Nice lineup for UCLA right now with Jordan Anderson and Claire Felix up front. Felix has four kills out of the middle. Ford springs up. Point women of Troy. I thought that was a great read. I thought Felix did a nice job with her hands. Certainly didn't get the penetration that she needed. Whittingham back to serve. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh, 
runs behind. We had talked about several times how good she looks coming off of that one foot. And look at her put this ball down. It's a lot of fun. You know, went over and gave her a hug right away. What a pass from Ford. Sets that up, the quick ball to Reddins. Boy, this USC team is happy, happy to have her back and healthy and fit in that middle blocking position, also an offensive threat. Yeah, last season, the Reddins had a terrible time. She had strep, severe tonsillitis. She missed nine games, three weeks, a lot of fitness during that time. You mentioned what incredible shape she's in now. Outside. Yeah, Johnson getting stronger, too. This is the first the conference has had a look at USC with their new offense, and they look completely different, as you've mentioned, Tammy, than they have in years past. Ford, that one hits the antenna. And this is a chance for UCLA to take the momentum away. You know, we saw UCLA try to keep it close, but USC has had great starts to each set here in this match. So UCLA has had an uphill battle starting with each set. Oh, Ford. That ball is no touch, but the height that she got on that jump. She's not that big. She got super high up after this broadcast. Most of you are going to see the drive up next as Ford puts another one down. But those of you watching Pac-12 Network, you see an encore presentation of the drive at 10 p.m. Don't you like how they continue to go back to Ford? Yeah, I do. And <laughs> the smile there, and why not? I mean, this is a player that is rolling right now. And Mick Haley telling us yesterday, she trains hard, she studies hard. Ball gets in, and a point for the women of Troy. Certainly all the surrounding things that happen for you as a student athlete when you're a freshman influence what happens for you, in this case, on the volleyball court. She is a, as you mentioned, Aunt Marie, a student athlete that has settled in nicely with not only her studies, but living conditions, and really getting accepted early on to this team, gaining the respect of her teammates as well. Yeah, it's so hard. I mean, you forget sometimes as freshmen, they're living in a different place. They've got the weight of college courses at all these great academic institutions that comprise the Pac-12. And then, oh yeah, and you're expected to play for the best volleyball conference in the nation. And she's starting as a freshman. Insane. Bricio. And it's put back to Johnson. So nice. Whittingham, set up a ball. That middle could not be stronger. Ruddens plays almost effortlessly. Just looks so smooth and... And that connection, UCLA is going to have to try to talk it over during a short break and see what they can do to remedy this. They're down by seven. Home of the UCLA Bruins. Stay at 7.30 on Pac-12 Network. This Pac-12 women's volleyball rivalry matchup is presented by Clean Crisp Coors Light. And by Tashikara. We've got the ball. You bring the game. Welcome back to beautiful UCLA, USC, and UCLA in a top 15 matchup to open conference play. 12-5, a USC lead as the women of Troy completely retooled their offense and are trying it out today, out for the first time against a Pac-12 opponent. Great service reception there. Bricio. Touch. Point Trojans. McHaley is over there smiling. He understood that UCLA had a great look at staying in system there, but his team was able to come right back. Transition, a big smile for him, and 
you talked about the changes that he's made. I've enjoyed talking with Mick about the changes, especially when he talks about the fact that they've had to embrace early on the fitness and really attacking the fitness to run the quick tempo. But they all bought in. Meanwhile, UCLA, we have seen them in other matches play much better than this. They're, this is a team of great athletic skill and capability. Tammy, what's going wrong for the Bruins? You know, I, I think, for, first of all, I think it's a, a, a blow when, when USC jumps out so early in each set. I mean, they realize they've got such an uphill battle. And we've talked about USC how many times pulling away by seven, eight points. And the Bruins going to take their game to Northern in California and try to take it out on Stanford and Cal. This is a team who's won eight consecutive matches coming in, but USC's dropped only two sets all season. You just mentioned that UCLA has played better than we're seeing them here today. It, it would be hard not to mention how well they played in the Rainbow Wahine Classic. If I'm not mistaken, you look at the schedule, they have yet to play a five-set match, but they rolled over some great teams. A win over number 17, Hawaii. The freshman setter, Muno, who set well. Anderson, Felix, both played well. Frager had a big solo block. And then another win over number 18, University of San Diego for the Bruins. Yeah, and UCLA has had a couple of five-setters. USC has not, of course. But in those five setters for UCLA, I think what you were saying, Tammy, was that they won those five setters. They were able to pull it out. And that says a lot about a team when you talk about fitness as you have for UCLA to be that fit and win those five sets in the heat of Hawaii, by the way. Outside. Angle's too sharp. Bruins chipping away. Perfect pass, but the block is better. That's Jenny Frager. Well, I just mentioned in that match against number 17 at the time, Hawaii, she had a big solo block to get things started. Another big one by Frager here, and the fans in Poly Pavilion absolutely love it. USC, however, still up four over UCLA. Where champions play. Welcome back to Los Angeles Pac-12 Volleyball presented by Tashi Kara. USC leading this match two sets to none. And on well, Sunday, there's even more women's volleyball action on Pac-12 Network. Pac-12 reigning champions, eighth ranked Stanford, hosts this fearless third ranked USC team. Coverage begins Sunday at four on Pac-12 Network or on Pac-12 Now and Pac-12. It's going to be a great matchup. We've already mentioned that John Dunning figuring out how the pieces of the puzzle are coming together. I think Matty Bug is, is the setter there, really is the engine, the quarterback of that team. But how about the fresh and the number one player coming in out of the nation, Haley Hudson for Stanford Cardinal, has been playing well. I'm going to enjoy watching that matchup on the Pac-12 Networks. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun, and it's interesting watching the freshman here in Samantha Ford for USC take some pressure off of Bricio. At least for, excuse me, I was watching Samantha Bricio, right? Take some pressure off of Bricio. Beautifully done by Ryan Chandler. Michael Seeley has used Muno as a setter, Ryan Chandler as a setter. We saw that in set number two, trying to figure out which one's got the rhythm, which one is working for the offense. Bricio's pass. And yeah, pieces to go and everything she could to reach it. Jenny 
You know, Tammy, you were right. I have to correct myself. You were kind not to do it for me. Neither of these teams has played a five-set match yet. You were right the yeah. first time around. UCLA had not. We knew USC had not. We had talked about that earlier this week. I, I just think it's remarkable. Both teams having a very tough Emory non-conference schedule. And, and while we're not seeing a, the UCLA team that I think that we are going to see soon hereafter, and, of course, they're not out of it yet in this match whatsoever. They still got a lot of good parts. They're well coached by Michael Seeley. Yep, and it's the second part of each set that they've turned it on, just like they're doing now. And it's been Haley Lawless time after time. And, and, and here's the key to this is that they're coming together a little bit. Granted, a, a big uphill battle as USC at the start of each set really creates a big hole by going up six or seven. But they have shown this UCLA team that they can make the small plays at important times. Now they've just got to win the set. And that's where it all has to come together. Brizio. Enoy, perfect dig. Mauricio waiting for it. Felix puts it right in her hand. Credit UCLA for being able to go back and forth between their setters right now. Chandler and Yuno. Mauricio back to serve. Roof block. Ogums is fired up. And if there's a miss block, which in this match has been rare by USC, they have been absolutely sharp in their block. Look at the adjustment late as Abercrombie thought she was going to have to swing out to that right antenna. But she makes an adjustment at the last second, goes straight up. And that double block thrown up. The defense still behind that block is ready and set for USC as Bricio. It's another service air. Bushler back to serve. UCLA just down by four, playing better in the second part of this set. But a nice connection again. USC sets the middle so frequently. At least today they do. They can because they're getting good passing. Mick Haley talked about passing. He emphasized that on our phone call earlier this week as you take a look at Ogums, who takes a nice swipe at it. Outside. Ford uses the block again. Kill number 11. The improvement that I've seen by this freshman, Elise Ford, from early on in non-conference, the second match of the season till now, is that she may have struggled a bit with the pass because of the aggressive serves at this level, the transition from high school to college. However, I think she has adjusted well, and I think that's brought an increase in her productivity on the outside as well, a little bit more confidence for the freshman. Yeah, she's, she had 13 kills against Oklahoma. She's challenging her career, young career, mind you. Yes. Career high. <laughs> Whittingham with an ace serve. You know, UCLA will learn a lot from this match. They played Virginia. They had a sweep of Virginia that you and our colleague Holly McPeak saw them play early on in this season. And then they went on to lose to LMU in a shocker. But then they responded to that well. And I think that that was a key for UCLA was how they responded. A sweep of American University, a sweep of Iowa in match number four. And then, of course, that great Rainbow Wahine Classic. So it is a UCLA team that had a down moment, came back, and showed their resilience, perseverance. And it's something that they're going to have to try to figure out as they battle through this match. UCLA not going away. Look at the big block again. Guess who? Number 10 for the Bruins, Frager. Yeah, it's really interesting because you know that Stanford and Cal are watching this match to prepare for their weekend against these Southern California schools. And UCLA will look totally different next weekend. 
because Jenny Anderson, I'm sorry, Anderson, Jordan Anderson has been quite quiet today. Five kills, but also five errors. We've seen her, as you mentioned, just go off with different angles. This will be a tough one to swallow, but the recovery is all in the Bruins. They've got it. Great pass, and there's Anderson. Up front comes Haley Lawless, bringing great energy as she comes back in. Jordan Anderson, the MVP of that Rainbow Wahin Classic. And also the UCSB, the tournament in Santa Barbara. Some accolades to her name already in her young career as a Bruin. Backcourt, Bricio tipping it. Ball still good. Formico, 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 Formico. Taylor getting it done. Watch this read by Bricio. There's Formico, lays out to keep the ball alive for UCLA. Point UCLA, Chandler back to serve. Ford, tough angle on the Brock waiting for her. Didn't you just call Frager's number a minute ago? <laughs> Six blocks apiece against USD and Hawaii. Those are some pretty good numbers there against two top 20 ranked teams in the nation for Frager early on this season. Bricio, spot on. What a delivery. Pizza Segola to Ruggins. Again, Bricio's pass. Ruggins crushes it for her eighth kill. Match point for USC in this conference opener. A top 25 matchup, in fact, a top 15 matchup between these two teams to get your conference play started. And it's going to end with an ace serve out front of Victoria. It's an ace on her rival's home court. Well, Emory, certainly USC looks sharp. They look polished. They look like they have played together in this new system that Mick Haley introduced in January. An up-tempo offense, executing the swing block when they can. It is a USC team that has a huge upside to them. They come into Poly Pavilion across the freeway across the city and beat them on their home floor to start out the Pac-12 Conference. A big win for the Trojans. Last year, the Bruins swept USC. This year, USC comes in and meets the Bruins on their home floor. Tammy, for the Bruins, what do they need to think about going into the Bay Area this weekend? Well, well certainly cleaning things up. I think Cal played a very good match against Stanford last night. We're going to see a Stanford-USC matchup. Certainly going to be a battle for both of these SoCal schools to go up to the Bay Area. But I think a different UCLA team will come out. They certainly struggled here tonight, but they're going to continue to get better and improve. This match goes to USC in a three-set sweep. After this broadcast, most of you will see the drive at 9.30 p.m. While those of you watching Pac-12 Network will see an encore presentation of the drive at 10 p.m. That's going to do it from Holly Pavilion in Westwood, California. Final score, USC 3, UCLA nothing. For Tammy Blackburn and our entire Pac-12 Network's crew, I'm Anne-Marie Anderson saying so long from UCLA. You've been watching Pac-12 Women's Volleyball on Pac-12 Network. Good night, everyone.